the Bible gives us clear instruction on how we are to pray. And Jesus taught us in Matthew 6, starting at verse 9, the Lord's Prayer. Let's all recite that together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to the temptation, but to deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So how does that prayer start out? In praise. Glorifying God, honoring God, exalting God. And that's how we need to start our prayers. Every time we pray, proclaim His power over heaven, the spiritual realm, and on earth, our physical realm. Proclaiming His will to be done in both realms. Then he clearly says that we are to pray, give us this day, our daily bread. That means that we are to only ask for our needs to be filled. What we need today, not tomorrow or long into our future. So don't be tempted to pray for your wants, but only for what is needed today. Matthew 31 through 34. We're going to look that up next. I have a lot of scriptures. If you want to follow them, that's great. If not, Matthew 6, starting at verse 31. So do not start worrying. Where will my food come from? Or my drink? Or my clothes? These are the things the pagans are always concerned about. Your Father in heaven knows that you need all these things. Instead, be concerned about everything else with the kingdom of God and with what He requires of you, and He will provide you with all these other things. So do not worry about tomorrow. It will have enough worries of its own. There is no need to add to the trouble that each day brings. God wants to fill your every need every time you need something, but not our wants. My personal want list is huge. <laughs> I want a beautiful house, someone to clean it, some nice furniture would be nice too. A big art studio, a large shop for all, with all the tools you could ever imagine. I'd love to have a landscaper to cut my lawn and to trim all my trees. The list is on. Does yours? But do I really need all of those things? I don't think so. God has provided us with the land that we live in, with a shack and old mobile home, with a roof over our heads, with cooling in the summer, and a wood stove to keep us warm in the winter. There's food in the fridge and in the cupboard. There's propane in the tank to cook it. I have cleansers so I can clean. And I have a lawnmower that works. All I have to do is push it. All that I have came from God. Yes. All these things keep me more active yes. and actually keep me healthier. Yes. I love to garden. And there's a scripture that I want to read about gardening. 2 Corinthians 9-10 And God, who supplies seed for the sower and bread to eat, 
will also supply you with all the seeds you need and will make it grow and produce a rich harvest from your generosity. And in Psalms 67, 6 and 7, the land has produced its harvest. God, our God, has blessed us. God has blessed us. May all people everywhere honor God. He provided the shade cloth that covers my garden, the potting soil, and the containers, the seeds to replant every year by letting the plants go to seed, the vegetables that come at harvest, the 20 trees in our orchard, for fruits to dry and can and to freeze. He provides the water from our well to make it all grow. He provides every bit of it, all of it. Sure, we work for that money, the purchase, the materials, but God provided that job that paid us. Do you see where I'm going? We are nothing without God. We have nothing worth anything without God. We have to give all the glory to God for absolutely everything that we have. The next part of the Lord's Prayer, this is the tough one. Forgive us our trespasses. That means forgive us our sins. For when we sin, we have trespassed God's laws. And what are those? The Ten Commandments. Help us to forgive those who trespass against us. That's really, really hard. But he's telling us very clearly that we need to forgive others for all the offenses that they have ever done to us. Even those sandpaper people, those who just rub us the wrong way, but to live in true peace with God, we have to forgive everyone that has ever sinned against us. And you need to ask God to forgive them too. Isn't this what we do when we go through the healing of the hurts? Have any of you been through the healing of the hurts? I know it's really helped to me to learn to heal. Matthew 6, 14 and 13 says, If you forgive others the wrongs they have done to you, your Father in heaven will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not you the wrongs that you have done. That sounds pretty clear to me. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Who leads us into temptation? The devil. The devil. It's certainly not God. God has given us a choice between good and evil. And we can be and are influenced and even led by the devil to sin. Or we can choose not to sin. Ask God to guide you on your path in life and help you to not be led into that temptation, to that sin. And very importantly, ask him to deliver you from the evil. We have a deliverance team here. At this church, and if you've never gone through deliverance, it's something you should definitely consider doing. And let me read you an excerpt from the uh, what is it the uh, Spiritual Warfare Bible, the Ministry of Deliverance. There is no substitute for the Ministry of Deliverance. 
the freedom that comes from casting out demons enables believers to rise to new levels of faith and obedience. It also opens the way for evangelism. The controlling powers of darkness are neutralized and more people respond to the preaching of the gospel. It's a key to opening up entire regions to be evangelized. The heavens are opened and the blessings of God are released. <laughs> Deliverance is necessary to attack and drive out religious spirits that have aborted and hindered much of what God desires to do. Spirits of witchcraft, generational demons, must also be challenged and driven out. Deliverance opens the way for holiness. Cleanliness and purity must be in place to keep the church from being diverted from its it's a wonderful, wonderful ministry. I've gone through it a few times and been free of so much going on. If you need to be delivered, come see me afterwards. No problem. It truly freed me from a brain fog that I had been living with my whole life. It also freed me from a generational demon that I had battled for 20 some years, inflicting pain in my right hip. Doctors call it genetics. My father dealt with the hip pain. His father dealt with the same pain. It had passed through our bloodline to me. Someone's words long ago had cursed my family through three generations to inflict pain on me. <coughs> Deliverance freed me. If you have not experienced this mighty ministry, please, please come see me. Their words had the power from the government truly evil, but the power of God and the Holy Spirit have way more power. The ultimate power. How do we end the Lord's Prayer? By recognizing that ultimate power. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And amen, the word amen means so be it. In this world, the devil doesn't want you to glorify God. He wants us to speak his language. He wants us to loose those demons upon ourselves, to speak evil, to proclaim our wants and our fleshly desires. Let's say you're praying for someone to find the Lord. To get to know Jesus. In your prayer, don't say, I want them to get to know what I'm doing. Here's that word again. Ask God to show his light through someone that's in their path of life. Maybe that isn't your assignment in particular. Ask God to help them recognize God in that person. To open their eyes to see to open their ears to hear his word, to soften their hard heart, to enable his Holy Spirit to enter in. Do you see the difference? Let's say you're praying for healing. Do you condemn yourself with an affliction? Are you claiming that you have a disease? Or do you say, I have been diagnosed with such and such infliction. You are condemning yourself to have that disease or that ailment. Instead, say, I battle this disease. 
Otherwise, you're speaking the devil's language. He wants to have all the diseases. He wants you to have all the diseases. Each and every one of them. He wants us to die in misery. <clears throat> you are making the devil rejoice every single time that you claim the disease. Claim healing. Instead, by saying, by his stripes, I am healed. Jesus was whipped the day he died. He took 40 minus 1 lashes. That equals 39. There are 39 categories of diseases. He took every one of our diseases to the cross. by his blood that he shed that day and by the resurrection power that miracle that was performed by God to raise him from the dead for us we can claim we are healed in Jesus' name amen. Amen. amen claim it every time you're feeling something turn that devil around by asking God to loose angels on your behalf. Warring guardian angels to protect you in this mighty spiritual battle. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. The truth is your body always, always, say that, always, always responds to your words in some manner, either for better or for worse. So speak healing. And you know what else? So does your finances. Every time you say, I'm broke, there's not enough money for that. I can't afford to do that. The devil has been given more power over your and said, say, God will provide all my needs when I need them. And God will. I've seen it happen time after time in my life. You know, it, it, there was a time at the end of the month when all the finances were totally exhausted. We're wondering, oh my goodness, how are we going to get our car serviced? He provided an art sale for me. I'm also an artist. And there came a sale and provided that car service that we needed that day. He does that all the time for us. <coughs> he will come through, come through for you too in each one of your needs. Only if you speak and pray correctly. We, have, as believers, have been given the power from God to change our lives by what we speak, either life or death. What does the devil want for us? Misery, pain, suffering. Disease, drunkenness, addictions, fears, suicide, murder, heartbreak. I rebuke all of those things in the name of Jesus Christ. That's his goal for us, to come and kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to destroy our lives. Let's go to Ephesians 6, 12. For we are not fighting against human beings, but against wicked spiritual forces in the heavenly world, the spiritual realm, the rulers, authorities, and cosmic powers of this dark age. God and the devil 
are in a huge spiritual battle. And we are the prize. God wants to save us, each and every person that's on this whole earth. And the devil wants to destroy us. Are you giving the devil his day by speaking doom and gloom over your health, your finances, your relationships, our state, our country, or even over this world? Stop it. Let's go to Matthew 12, 36 and 37. You can be sure that on Judgment Day, you will have to give an account of every useless word you have ever spoken. Your words will be used to judge you, to declare you either innocent or guilty. Just like we need to speak healing over our bodies to make us well, we also need to speak healing over this nation and this world. Speak it out loud. The devil doesn't hear your thoughts. Only God can do that. Speak it so that the devil hears you loud and clear. Make the choice to be well again by speaking to your body daily. Make the choice to heal this land by speaking to the devil and his demons to go back to the pit of hell where they belong. And ask God for peace on this earth, for healing for the nations. God's word is creative power. The world was made by God's words. Confessing the word of God can and will change your world. With prayer, it can change an image of sickness to healing and health. Prayer can change an image of this nation from socialism, communism, Marxism, to health, prosperity, and freedom. We have the power to change this world if we look to God and not the devil. If we speak good and not evil. If we acknowledge God is in everything, is everywhere, and is the mightiest of gods, we must honor him in every word we say, in every deed we do, everywhere we go. Let's read Hebrews 12, 28-29. Let us be thankful then because we receive a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Let us be grateful and worship God in a way that will please Him with reverence and awe because our God is indeed the destroying fire. And Philippians 4, 8. In my conclusion, my friends, fill your minds with those things that are good and that deserve praise. Things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and honorable. Put into practice what you learned and received from me, both from my words and from my actions, and the God who gives us peace. Dear Lord, we want to thank you so much for this message today. Thank you for touching hearts and minds in this room. May it go out of here on the tongues of these people, reaching others, and may they invite others to be here with us next week when Cindy comes back and gives the message to us once again. We thank you, thank you, Lord. We praise you for honor you in everything. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.